2024 marks the 100th anniversary of the return of uh, Asante Ini Prempe the first from Seychelles. What did he end up doing there? And who was this man? We get answers from our favorite historians, Yao Anoche Frimpong. Always good to speak with you Thank on you. matters of history. Talk to us about Asante Ini Prempe the first. Who was he in private life before he became the, the king. Yes, in private life, I will say that he was the son of the then queen mother of Ashanti, Nana Yecha. She was very fair and very young, almost to say a teenager. Mm -hmm. When the queen mother stool became vacant and the queen mother wanted to install him as the next Asante uh, His name, indeed, he was given the name Kwekudia the first, and later on changed his name to uh, Kosiajima Prempe, who became Prempe the first. Just a little note, how are Asante Hines selected? Asante Hines are uh, selected by the very families they come from. Mm -hmm. In fact, among the Akans, they use the same system, whereby in order to be a chief, you must come from that royal family, from the requisite line, because there will be so many people in the family, mm -hmm. but there must be a certain line that can ascend to the throne. And you must have been selected by the kingmakers and then the king makers would ultimately show you to or introduce you to the queen mother. And when the queen mother endorses that, then you will publicly be made the king. Does the queen mother necessarily have to be the, the, the candidate's mother? In fact, among the Ashantis, the queen mother rather selects. So if the queen mother wants anybody from the royal house. And you should know that among the accounts, there is no, no line between your own mother's children and my mother's children, provided we come from a very remote grandmother. We are all one. So the queen mother can look through it. And normally we say that if the uh, uncles are not dead, don't go and take brothers. And if the brothers too are not finished, don't go and take nephews. So you start from the top. But these days, because of education, you know, you may be very well qualified. But there's a, a young guy there who is an accountant or university lecturer, lawyer or doctor. It will go to him because we have modernized the system. Not only among the accounts, everybody, you know, you, you may put there a chief who is the direct person who should be the chief. And he can't even speak English. Mm. You know, nobody would like him. So, 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 so modern factors have come in. Modern factors have come in. So instead of the king, the king makers, the queen mother, because among the accounts, the stool is always for the, king, the queen mother. Mm. So she can put her own son there and there will be nothing wrong about it because she, he also belongs to the royal house. How do they know that they are? Are you captured, or are you? How does? You, how do you know that you, you you have been selected? Normally, we call it a capture. Okay. Because there are situations whereby, uh, after the stool has become vacant, those who qualify, they get up and say, "Make a prayer, I'm going to fight or struggle for the stool." So this, in this way, you can't say the person was captured. He went, and to be able to do that you will have to go and see, using Ashanti as an example, maybe somebody will go and see Mampo Hine, Bekwa Hine, Jabe Hine, Jesu Hine, another candidate will go and see Insuta Hine, Bantama Hine. It's like uh, lobbying to become vice lobbying. presidential candidate of any of the <laughs> yeah. modern day presidential So you candidates. lobby. Yeah. So that's one scenario. <laughs> All right. The other scenario is mm -hmm. where nobody goes to say me corporate, but the queen mother herself sits down and says, among all this, I believe this is the one that can protect my stool. Mm. And then the third scenario is where the king makers will sit down and say that based on A, B, C, D factors, this man should be the king. What is the relationship, blood relationship between the king makers and the eventual candidate? Are they of... Normally, they are not of blood, blood. relationship. Okay. Right. Uh, they are not, they, everybody has a role to play mm. 
You know, the only people with blood relationship as the king will be the queen mother and uh, a pain in your own royal house. Family head. The, your own family head. Mm. So the queen mother, your family head, will come together and look among, let's say, the children, mm -hmm. the one what, that will better protect the interests of the state, the one that would easily be acceptable by the people. Okay. Then they put him there. Then another thing that you should also know is that when, for example, the Ashantis II, and I mean Benshia, is vacant, you see that we put there the Mampohini to be the caretaker. If for any reason you can't put the mampon, you will go to a sumajan or offense or whatever. But never bequai, never jabe, never kokofu. Why not? It's a good question you've asked. Because the bequai hini is Oyoko. It belongs to the Oyoko clan. Kokofu belongs to Oyoko. And then Jabe is Oyoko. And Kumase is Oyoko. Mm. So when you make him the acting as Antehine, he can decide to take the stool. He won't go away. Mm -hmm. And you can't move him from it. Because mm -hmm. all accounts came from one source. And at a certain point, we're living at Adanse. And there was a famous Adanse king called Abu. He possibly should be the Abu Bansra. Mm -hmm. Who said that? Ah, we are all together. And when you call Kojo, you tell her, uh, yeah, is my relative. That person is my relative. And you don't know how to classify them. And then an illiterate African chief more than 600 years ago used the wisdom that is in the Bible that he classified the Akan people, the Adanse people, into families and gave them the name like Oyukwa and Sona uh, Abrade. Uh, name them. Uh, all those, the, the seven mm. clans among the mm. accounts he gave them. And so when he did that, it became so simplified that all one group that has one remote grand ancestress, you belong to that this. One line. This belong to that, that belong to that. Do all and the Santinis come from the Oyoko clan? All of them. All of them. Yeah. And okay. so what, to continue, what mm. makes it so beautiful, which our people should learn is the moment he did that and simplified every system. Because once you get to the town, if you are Oyoko, you can go to the Oyoko head of family easily, and they will treat you as a brother. And when he started doing that, other Akan states started copying the Adanse people. In fact, the Adanses are said to be the wisest people that the, among the Akans mm. God created. And so when anybody wanted to copy what Abu has done, they say, yes, yeah, Abu. Yes, yeah, a bu, a bushia. We are learning from a bushia, so it became a bushia. A bushia, so the bushia among that, and that's how it originated. Learning from a bu. Learning from a bu. So it also means that if the Ashanti stool becomes vacant and you make the mistake and you go to a hunter, for example, lower disco for my in an ana, a kwesiadiman, is also Oyoko, and you put him there, he can decide not to leave because you are one people. Yeah. That is why always the caretaker must not be a member of the royal of family. That's a wonderful question. And, 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 and it also provides a kind of checks and balances. Well. Checks and balance, yes. yes. Because it's not linked to the royal Directly family. Directly linked. And so he wouldn't think of usurping their position. Indeed. But rather ensure that the right thing is done quickly and he also moves away. Indeed. And the same would happen when his own stool becomes vacant too. Mm. There will be somebody from somewhere who, who will become, but him. not a close. Fam a, a family member. Yeah. Otherwise, when he sees the workers, and I say, a media. It's mine, so why, why am I going? Yes, as I sit here, <laughs> yeah. I am Oyoko. Mm -hmm. It's my father who is Ashanti, my mom is Nzima. Mm -hmm. So the moment you make a mistake and put me on any Ashanti stool or Fanti stool, that is Oyoko stool, and I decide not to get off, you can't remove me because we are one, people. one people. So that is why the caretaker must never come from the same clan. Yes. Very, very interest. wise. Uh, system our people followed back in the day. And so the woman put her son there. Yes. And at a tender age of 18. Yeah, very young. So, he was 18. Yes, mm -hmm. very young. Mm -hmm. And they warned her that she should not do it for some two or three reasons. Mm -hmm. The first one is that, you see, around that time, 
there were skirmishes, wars all the time. And this person is going to be the supreme commander of the Ashanti army. No, you needed a more experienced and exposed person and not this small boy. Second, for your own sake, if anything happens and they kill him, you have lost a young child whom you could have groomed for the future. The next reason was that Okonfo Anochi had told the Ashantis that they should never put a fair-colored, handsome man on the stool. And that boy was very handsome what, and very fair. What was Okonfo Anochi's reason for, for that you see, directive? People will make the mistake of thinking, and that is what the Ashantis believe, that uh, it will be a sacrilege to put a fair colored person there because he said the moment you put somebody like that there, the kingdom would fall. But I believe that, see, Okonfanochi was somebody who lived beyond his time. He was a very wise person. And indeed, if you read history, it says that when we are writing down the names of famous black people, the wisest black people, even 10, you would not leave out the name of Konfuanochi. I believe he was like Kwame Nkrumah and mm. uh, Ameto, you know, somebody like Ameto, mm. Fremamo and others, people who live beyond their time. He said that because in those days of war, in those days of magic, you know, people needed to protect themselves because we had our own religion that went with so many rituals. If you put their young, handsome, easygoing, person, before you realize he had become a womanizer. And when you become a womanizer, like men some bones who did, in a few years you were put on the stool, he had impregnated 100 women. Yes, and when they felt that he should go and avenge the Ashanti defeat in 1874, this womanizer was thinking about women and not war, <laughs> and the Ashanti had to depose him. Mm. So confirmed he felt that if you put there somebody who is young, he will be spoiled by his friends. If you put there somebody who is so handsome, he will be spoiled by women. And when, the moment women get attracted to you, you cannot be in a position to perform the rituals needed to suck you as a spirit person. Because when you are a chief, you are also the spiritual leader of the people. But accidentally or incidentally, it so happened that this fair colored young man was also the one who brought down the kingdom. Didn't the mother know all these things? The she knew, mother. but that was her favorite choice. Mm. And there was nothing that could be done. So 1888, he ascended the throne. And when he got chance to become the king, the mother helped him a lot because during the civil war, there was an Ashanti civil war, 1886 up to 1888, the kingdom split into three. You no, know, Some people wanted Mensa Bonsu, the womanizer, the womanizer to come back. Mm. Some people wanted Kofi Kakari because he was a very strong ruler. And the British defeated him only because of superior weapons in the Sagrenti War. Not that he wasn't good. And they deposed him not because he had been defeated, because he had desecrated graves, you know, at Bremen and removed gold to be given to poor people where he was very pragmatic, a positivist, that if we bury dead people with gold and we still have poor people walking about the street, then what do we achieve? You keep the gold again. I die, you bury me with gold. Then the number of poor people increase. So he started giving, digging for gold, desecrating graves to give the proceeds to the poor in the streets. When he did that, he had the appellation Kofi Kakari Achempo, the one who was giving gold trunkets mm, away. away and so they deposed him. So people felt that they should bring him back and just remind him, don't do that thing again. Mm. This, and then another group wanted a gentleman called Yao Chirubwana, the cousin of this Kokudia defense or Prempe defense. So civil war broke out in Ashanti. How did uh, uh, Prempe manage th these wars? Uh, the queen mother was behind him. Mm -hmm. And I was also going to say that Nana Yecha during the war period, mm -hmm. was able to keep the trade routes open. That's his mother. Yes, mm -hmm. and was able to deal with the British and 
all the traders along the coast. And any time there was trouble between the Fantis and the Ashantis, she took it upon herself mm -hmm. to go and settle the matter. So even though there was war in metropolitan Ashanti, it didn't affect the Gold Coast mm -hmm. much, all because of the ingenuity of the woman. Okay. So the Ashantis gave her the title, Echa Oyiakwai. One who yeah. opens the way. Who opens the way, oh, very good. Okay. So, so she was like a diplomat, like a Kofi Annan kind of person. A, dipl a great diplomat. Yeah. A great diplomat. Mm -hmm. So because of these things she did, the British gave her much support. Therefore, her own choice eventually won mm -hmm. and installed as a chief, 1888, at the March 1888. Did he have any problems? He, he, did he fight any wars against the British as he was a king? Yes. Mm -hmm. When he was made a king, mm -hmm. the British quickly informed him that as you have come, we want you to serve us. Secondly, don't forget that in 1874, we imposed a fine upon Kofi Kakari. That amount of money, 50,000 has still not been paid. Mm. So we have ensured you'll be a king so that you have your peace and then pay us our money and then everything will be settled because the debt is still lingering on. And they told him all this. He said, yes, there will be no problem. And what annoyed him was that the British added threats to it. To the 50,000 that he owed. No, that if you don't pay the money then we'll, quickly, we'll, we'll, do we'll depose you. you and put one of the contestants on the stool. Mm. Uh, so he felt that the British did not understand do I say Gold Coast, Ashanti, or Akan system? And I think it's pretty disrespectful, too. I mean, why, why do you tell the kids? Yeah, that the kids? a foreigner does not <laughs> place anybody on the stool. Mm -hmm. It is the people themselves who make their own kin. Yeah. So this thing disturbed the uh, Ashantis to the extent that this time, too, they wanted to send another delegation to the British, yeah, yeah. to Queen, uh, Queen, Queen Victoria. Victoria. You no, know, she ruled for a very long time, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so they wanted to send her to explain to her that he should warn the mm -hmm. governor because it's like he was going too far. After all, we are ready to work with you. How do you say that if I don't serve you, if I don't pay 50,000 ounces of gold, you would depose me and put another person there? Yeah. Let me go and talk to your own queen yeah, yeah. about our system. Yeah. Uh, eventually, what happened was that a young man from Ejeso, where Yasantua hid from, went down to the coast to tell the British that he knew where the Ashantis were hiding the golden stool so he could lead them to go and pick it. The British sent an expedition with some Hausa troops, one Vroom. They came and they couldn't find the golden stool, except that they saw marks at certain places to show that indeed the tent was actually hidden here and had been taken away. Because of their constant wars with the British, this time they didn't keep it in the palace or anywhere. They had a way of saving the golden stool away from the British. And this young man went and then asked them, told them he knew where the golden stool was. They came and then they didn't find the stool. And you see, we are learning something today. The reason why the British did not take it seriously was the deception concerning the golden stool, which most of us are undergoing even today. The deception was that the stool had been recorded golden stool. And the British understand or understood golden to mean anything of the gold color. Mm -hmm. Anything of the gold color. Or anything that glitters and sparkles. is of value, sparkles. Mm -hmm. So they call it golden, like the golden years mm -hmm. of Ghana football. That was in the 60s. You know, the golden years of British civilization. The golden years of, let's say, our civilization. All this are golden, but not actual gold. So when the British could not find the golden stool, it didn't bother them much. But they wanted a way to break the Ashanti power. And little did they know that that way lay with the golden stool rather. 
and they took Fante advice that the Ashantis were a very united people. That one is true. Led by the Asantehene, that one is also true. So the British governor, eh, uh, Bramford Griffiths, uh, yes, told the, Bramford Griffiths, yes, told the Asantehene that he would visit him. Prempe. Prempe the first, mm -hmm. and take the money, the 50,000 ounces of gold away. So you should be prepared to pay the money. Meanwhile, the governor was transferred, and then a new one came, continued with the dream. So he told Asante Hene that he would visit Ashante land, and that was a date in uh, 1896. The Asante Hene was very much scared because the visit brought thousands of troops to Kumasi. In fact, immediately about uh, 5,000 soldiers to Kumasi. From the Gold Coast. From the Gold Coast and the Hausa areas. The Ashantis did not think it was going to be war. <clears throat> they felt that after the Sagranti War, when they succumbed to the British, any other thing would just be an ordinary palaver between the Santehina and the governor, more or less as brothers this time, not hostile to anybody. So when the, he came, he made the Bekwahini to meet him. And the first day, the Santehini went to sit in public at a great Deba. Mm -hmm. And the king said, sorry, he was on uh, Adanse land and they should give him a day to reach there. Then he got there actually. Asante Hine was there, but he sent a message to the Asante Hine that he will not be able to attend the Deba because he was very tired and she waited for him. Who sent the message? The governor, the governor okay. Maxwell. Okay. Not knowing they were strategizing. So they used that three days to strategize very well. So the third day when Asante Hine was coming, and the first two days they knew that Asante Hine always came at uh, 9 a.m. So by 5, 6 a.m., <clears throat> about 5,000 uh, troops, in fact, armed to the teeth, were seated already. And they had rather made seats for the Asante Hini who would arrive later. On his own land? Yes, on his own. So previously, see, the Asante Hini would come first. Exactly. And then you, the visitor, they said, this is the place this they have. Said, exactly. This third day, yeah. the British themselves had made their own arrangement. And then the Asante Hini comes. And they told me, hey, no, no, sit here. But that was quite sit arrogant. Here, sit here, sit here. And they <laughs> sat about the day. After they had been seated, realizing that beside every Asante chief one was one soldier here, one soldier, and the one soldier mm -hmm. the other way. So that was when the Asantes realized if they, they had been trapped mm -hmm. and if they attempted to fight, all their chiefs would be mm -hmm. killed. Yeah, finished all the chiefs would first be killed before the main war would start. So they were shaking and they didn't know what to do. Now, the Asante Hines interpreter, to be an interpreter, you must have had education. Yeah, he walked, they sat there for some time, nobody was talking. Now, he went and whispered something to the ears of the Asante Hines. Then the Asante Hine went to his mother. A child. A child. And then they got up. You see, they knew that the, the governor had come only for the money. But looking at the arrangement, they felt anything at all could happen. Mm -hmm. And the young chief knew if he joked, all, he and all his people would be killed. He wanted to avoid that. So he removed his sandals and removed his crown and brought down his cloth. Ashantis will say, Wakwaha Nentoma. To do that means you are going to submit to the one who is the fully power. dressed. Yes, yes. Yeah. And then he walked with. But that's how people meet the Ashantini right now. They, they, they lower their cloth when they come to the Every big chief. As I sit yeah. here, mm -hmm. I'm on Garland. Mm -hmm. When I'm going to meet the Gamancho, yeah. Any important guard chief, mm -hmm. I should bring no down lower. Yes, yeah. it shows as a Some sign respect. of respect. And I'm told in my research, I learned that when you are approaching 
an important chief or any chief for that matter. You are a stranger and the way the cloth is worn, it always covers one of your hands mm -hmm. and it can well be that you have a gun right. or a dagger yes. in it. That is why as a visitor, you are made to lower everything for the king to be sure that you, are, that you come in peace. You came in peace. Yeah, yeah. Plain-headed, white-headed. Very smart. Very good. Yeah. So that's something he did the same he Lowered thing. his cloth. Lowered his cloth mm -hmm. and went to kneel down with his mother before the governor and told the governor that he was ready to serve him to accept the British flag and the money he would pay. But there was no way he could pay immediately. That would take a long time. That's why he said it bravely, that... The time. war was fought mm -hmm. during Kofi Kakari's time. And I knew nothing about the war. And look at my age. I come in today and you tell me repressions of war. Something I didn't know. So I'm supposed to tell you I can't pay. But because of the circumstances, I will pay you. But not today as you sit here. And as Antehini, uh, the British governor said, don't worry. You either pay me the money, I go. Or you don't pay and you, your mother, and all the chiefs sitting behind you would be imprisoned. And before he could finish his statement, the order had been given, and all the Ashanti chiefs arrested. Then those standing far off quickly rushed to their homes, and as Antigone signaled them, as they were taking them, that no, I don't want bloodshed. That is why I have sacrificed myself and my stool. I don't want bloodshed. So they took him, his mother, and then all the paramount chiefs, in fact, away. Where? First of all, to Cape Coast Castle, mm -hmm. then later to Elmina Castle, then to this place, Freetown, Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. So in all, it was about four years here and Sierra Leone. And they discovered that the Ashantis were going in bands to visit him. And they even made an attempt to kidnap the Santehine and bring him back. Mm. So they sent him to the east coast of Africa, Seychelles. Because of the behavior of the Asantehine, the first time removing his sandals in public and going to kneel down before the white man, many villages sprang up on the Gold Coast named Brofiedru. Meaning? The white man is strong. Oh. The white man is durable. Mm. So if you hear in the Shanti, in Adanse, oh, Adanse Brofiedu, Fanti Brofiedu, Wasa Brofiedu, mm. uh, just because of what happened what that happened day. There? Because I can't, nobody could think or imagine how the Asante Hine will remove so his sandals and walk barefooted. What is the significance of taking off your sandals? As it a means you have no chief. power. You've been disturbed. Yes, you have no power. Mm. So you are telling the white man that before you have no power. And rightly so. And he took off his crown as well. Took off the crown. So before you have no power. No is close. Yeah. And you see when he did that, that was Ashanti ingenuity. If the white man had listened to him and gone away, then the Ashantis would laugh them, laugh at them and say that, hey, yana nana oniminyansa o. Nanani and Nana was very wise. He pretended he feared the white man. Took off his sandals, everything away. After all, there is a saying that Abuwa Koko Sechi wa denekwa siye the vulture, by pretending to be a fool and eating excreta and unwholesome bit, could live to be 100 years. Mm. And those that decided to be neat and fine, the hunters would always kill them. And so they would say, oh, the Asante Hini only behaved like a vulture. But you should know that the white man had already planned before coming. And the reason for the plan was what I said already, that they had learned from the coastal tribes that Ashantis were a united people uh, symbolized by their king. Mm. So the moment you are able to take the king away, mm. you have finished them. Ashanti would never stand again. So that was the intention of the British by taking him away. Did you think he miscalculated? Did he ever think that he would be arrested and, and The Shantis never thought of that because mm. if they had thought of that, they would have told the British that Nana is ill. He's indisposed. Mm. So, so they some other, yes. <laughs> that would have, they, they would never yeah. have made him to mm -hmm. meet the, uh, the British. But they thought they, they had only come to 
make terms and go away. And also, the British had never made any attempt of arresting an Asante Even in 1874, mm. when they were badly beaten, Indeed. they never thought of going to arrest Kofi Kakari. So taking away the chief was never part of their syllabus. I understand Robert Baden Powell, the, the founder of the, the Boy Scouts, World Boy Scouts mm. uh, was, was kind of linked to Premper in a way. Definitely. He was part of the expedition. The expedition that came through. He was part of the expedition. Mm -hmm. And not only that, when the British went away, took the king away, they made a rule that they would deal with Ashanti, not as an Ashanti state. You know, at first they dealt with Ashanti as an Ashanti state. This time, an ordinance was passed segregating each state in Ashanti from the other. Mm. So now we had Kumasi state, Ofinsu state, Jabin state, what do you call it, Ejisu state, Kokofu state, Bekwai state, Mampon state, Dadiase, Insuta, Domiabra, and Kranza, name them. So the British were basically trying to scatter the And they warned them nobody should serve the other. Mm. Just as they had done to the southern states. Exactly. So when you come to southern Ghana, go to one town like Discov. Lower Discove, Upper Discove. Then just a mile away, a hunter, traditional council. Go to Second D, Esikado, and then Second D. Go to Axim, Upper Discove, uh, sorry, Upper Axim, Lower Axim, and Sign. That was what they did to the coastal people, and they succeeded in doing to Ashanti. So the king was taken away, Ashanti sat back and got very angry with the governor and started finding a way of reorganizing to go and fight back. So immediately they put there, they forgot their own differences and put there another person on the throne, Prempe II, even though he was not recognized by the British because they felt that the Kumasi too should be vacant and would have to be ruled by three men at a time. They put there somebody and secretly the Ashantis were serving him. Even though the British knew, for example, they were dealing with Offenso State. Offenso itself knew it was not a state. It was subject to the Golden Stool. So the Ashantis felt that for as long as the Confanochi Golden Stool was there, their unity was intact. And the person, the entity they served was not a human being. But the stool. But the stool. Mm. I hope you understand. I and understand. it's very clear. I understand. So it means that the battle had not ended. Do, do the events that happened around the tricking of Prempe I lead to the emergence of Yasantua? Naturally, because when they took him away, uh, the, what the Fantas had told them, that they are sort of united behind one king, it was true, but it didn't work. Then the same Fantas would tell them that because we are matrilinear, when you kill 1,000 Akan men, it doesn't affect them. But when you kill the women, it affects them most. But the one that would pierce the heart of the Ashantis is that they are goddess too. And then for the first time, the British would now learn that the thing was not a golden stool, which is a mistake and de uh, deceptive. It was rather a gold, a pure, solid gold. Really? And so even now, you know, we call it the golden stool. Yes. Indeed, it's not a golden stool. It's a gold stool. Because golden is not the same as gold. So it's pure gold. You can be wearing something golden. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What I see here yes. is golden. golden color, yes. Anything that glitters mm -hmm. is golden. You but, understand? But it's actually a gold stool. But this one was a gold stool. So now the British came to understand that there's something which for more than 200 years been called golden stool, golden stool in all history books. And they thought it was an ordinary stool and they also thought that they gave it a name golden stool because it was the stool of the king of Ashanti himself. For the first time, they came to understand that it was really a stool made of solid gold. And so they wanted it. And they wanted it. And then the Fantis themselves, they didn't know. You know, it took a long time for the Ashantis and Fantis to have an intercourse. So they didn't know what was actually happening in the midst of Ashanti, that what united them was not an ordinary wooden stool and was not anything that is smeared with gold or spread with gold or anything that glitters. It is solid gold. 
And apart from being solid gold, which the British needed desperately, after it was because of gold that Azambuja came to Ghana even for about three, four hundred years mm, earlier. 14, and you are getting one. Century. Then two, this was something that embodied their soul. So it's not taking away Prempe that will disintegrate Ashanti, but taking away the yes. golden stone. So they had to bring another expedition to ask for the golden stool. And we know the rest of the story. There was this arrogant guy who asked for the stool, the British man. Yes, uh, Sir Frederick Hodgson. Hodgson. You know, when he Hodgson. came, this time was Ashantis who received him, unlike the earlier one. They came early yeah. and received and gave him a place to sit. I think they learned their lesson from their the lesson. previous time. <laughs> <laughs> and he told them that, ah, if it had been the Asantehin, would have given him the golden stool to sit on. Now the Asantehin is away, and I am the one taking care of Ashanti. So where so, is the stool? Yeah, so why do you give me an English stool, <laughs> a Western stool? Yeah. I want the golden stool. Go and bring the golden stool. And we know the rest of the story. That was what made Yasantua angry. angry. And then another war broke out. And indeed, the, it was the... Queen mother of a, 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 a fan so called Nana Afranewa, mm -hmm. who was able to hide the golden stool. And indeed, when Ashantis talk about the fame of Yasantua, they should give the same, if not greater, to the Queen mother of Ofenso Nana Afranewa, because the stool was hidden at Bare, which was close to Ofenso. And when they heard that the British were very close to it, the as an uh, offensive he had already been captured and sent to Seychelles. So it was this queen mother who stood up, got some offensive truce with him, with her, and then reached where the place was, and then they took away the, the, stool. Uh, the stool. So when the British arrived, there was nothing to be taken. So the Ashantis must begin to learn and revere Nana Afranewa. Yes, Antua could have fought them all right, but she, yes, Antua did not herself know where the stool was. was. It was the Nafranua who knew because it was on offensive soil and was able to save it. So I believe that the Ashantis will begin to go back to history and give every reverence to this woman. And then after the war, definitely Yasantua will be captured to join Nana and then they will stay there to Seychelles. Seychelles. What was life like for uh, Asantini Prempe the first in Seychelles? Very good. When he went there, he himself testified upon his return that he was given the best of treatment. And the British got very close. The British were in charge in Seychelles as in well. In Seychelles, yes. Mm -hmm. That was their island. Mm -hmm. They gave him the best of treatment and the best of respect. Because you see, it's about 65 people were taken away. Chiefs and their servants and their wives. So life didn't change so much for them personally. And they were given whatever they needed to make them feel at home, they did for them. They also gave them Western education. And many of the members of the entourage uh, who had children, that their children, because 30 years was a long period mm, of time. Yes, so years, their yeah. children, their nephews, became clergymen, priests, Anglican priests. And the Asantehini himself converted and was baptized. And he became an Anglican, accepting communion all the time, just as a uh, Nana Yasantua. And it is said that Yasantua did more evangelism than the rest of them. Do you, know, do you know what English name they gave him when they baptized? You know when they baptize you, they give you English names? I believe that's a very beautiful thing. Yeah, I should we need go to find out name. what, what uh, name I, I they should, gave we, we have to. I have to go and find out. <laughs> yes, indeed. I will find it very easily when I get to Menshia Museum. Indeed. I have to go and learn that if they gave him an English they, name. And whatever they gave him. But as for the Catholics, yes. it was compulsory. Mm -hmm. But you know that the... Anglicans somehow rebelled against the, yeah, the Catholic, Catholic system. Yeah. So it could be that you have you well get your be, name. Yeah, that you maintain. Did he go did he carry his wives with him to they Seychelles gave, or did he, or, they or, or yeah, he, he found some women there? Two or three wives. He went Instead two or three of wives. more than twenty wives. Just a few, a well, handful. He had about twenty when he was in Ghana. Definitely, yes. Okay. Because when you become a chief, mm -hmm. you the, you you become the husband of the uh, uh, your de deceased uncle's okay. wives. Okay. So th this alone will give you several wives. <laughs> then we also have Nkonyari, stool, stool wives. wives. And then your own choices. Okay, so you choose your own. Your own. And you, you deal with this. You have the stool wives as stool well. Stool wives. And yeah. then having succeeded your uncle or your cousin okay. or his wives, 
become your wife. Whether you like them or traditional, okay. you should keep them. And was he supposed to deal with them as wives? I yes, mean? yes, properly so-called. Mm. Properly so-called, okay. as wives. It's quite busy. So you'll be a busy man. You'll be a very busy, like in Solomon. You'll be a busy man. But Indeed. I'm sure you don't forget the story of Kwame Tia. Yeah. That rascal Ashanti, uh -huh. he was the one who betrayed the Ashantis yes. and made the white people come for, nearly come for the stool. stool. Mm -hmm. And during the Yasantua war, when Yasantua was hiding somewhere around Yinayin, Yinayin, mm -hmm. this uh, Kwame Tunya had gone to report the story to the whites. The white people. And before Yasantua could realize they had captured her, that's why the Ashantis have a saying, Se tia tia na broni ate. If tia, as long as Tunya hears it, the white people will also mm -hmm. hear. And it became a word in Ashanti. Mm. You see that Ashanti say, what tia tia? That you become like like Chia, like Chia, a, a Judas, the, a Judas. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. a, dissident a dissident became an Ashanti yeah. word, a traitor, a yeah. dissident, a yeah. traitor, yeah. and that his name was incorporated into Ashanti uh, vocabulary. vocabulary, and he, he, his name was banned from Ashanti. That you should not mention the name yeah. Kwame Chia. Yeah. Uh, do you know what he did after? The Santehini and other chiefs had been taken away. Mm -hmm. This man became so powerful in Kumase to the extent that he had bodyguards, you know, colonial troops, mm -hmm. uh, Hausa troops, wow. protect him all the time. And anytime he loved any woman, he, he would just instruct the person to bring the one woman. Over. Among the women were Asantehines. Some of the Asantehines wives he had wow, loved. The man, the man was in fact, bold. this man was a sacrilege to Ashanti. <laughs> On too many we, levels. We don't have, in fact, we don't even need to say that. We are saying it because of history. For history. Because Ashantis don't oh. want to hear the name Kwame Tia. He just brought to law the Ashantis too. Imagine, and now, I it's so sad they didn't get him to, to, to chop to, off, to his, take off head. his head and yeah. drink something from it. So, so Asantini was in Seychelles for, for 28 years. Yes, almost 30 years. Almost 30 years. Yes. And then? Did he have children? Back yeah, then? oh, he had several children there. Mm -hmm. And all the chiefs had children there. And some came with them. Mm -hmm. Some too, because of the engagements, they remained. They stayed. Yes. Yeah, so so as we, we have an Ashanti uh, uh, population yes, in Seychelles now. Big one. Mm. And whenever there is a funeral or anything, they come. I wonder uh, whether they still speak tree. No. Ah, oh, no, no. Would have lost. Yeah, they because lost. the king himself, when he came, mm -hmm. he came at uh, the Takradi port. Mm -hmm. And the following day, they sent him to Ashanti. He was dressed in the European style. Oh. Yeah, and the, when, the following year, the, 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 the Prince of Wales came to the Gold Coast mm -hmm. to go and say hello to him. And both of them spoke English. English. Both of them were dressed in suits. suits. Okay. Yeah, so he had transformed. But he brought something good to the Ashantis. He told the Ashantis that you should begin to behave like the coastal people, accept education and accept the Christian religion, mm -hmm. and it will help you more. And then he had also come to understand that human sacrifice, when you die, you are dead, and you will be judged as an individual, and you stand before the throne of somebody called Jesus Christ. So he told his people that they should accept the Christian faith, specifically the Anglican faith, mm -hmm. and never ever think that the king is more important than another person, so that when he died, you will have to sacrifice the lives of others. So he came to revolutionize Ashanti life. And what, what made the British bring him back? Very good. That was a wonderful question. Because he could when have stayed there and him, died there. When they took him mm -hmm. away. You know that we had a legislative council here, more or less. Present, they would have called it parliament. Yes, indeed. Uh, so the parliament of the day, made up of the same fancy people, you know, started agitating that you have defeated the people, they are serving you. What is the point in keeping their king away? So they made agitations upon agitation until Governor Gorgesbeck felt that there was the need to bring him. You see, during the Ya Asantewa War, <clears throat> Nana Oforiata I, who was one of the champions in parliament at that and the legislative council to fight. Was he Dorche Hini? Dorche Hini mm -hmm. to bring the Asante Hini here. Mm -hmm. Was actually a, a soldier, a volunteer. You know, he volunteered and joined the British to go and take the golden stool from the Ashanti so that Achim and Ashanti would be the same. He said that the only difference between Asante and Achim was the golden stool. So if you take away the golden stool, then we become equal. Mm -hmm. Then years later, when he was made the Ochengen, 
you know, all human beings, we grow, we repent. You know, he felt that he had to do an about them. He rather sympathized with the Ashanti people and became one of the champions. He and one Kisli Hayford, mm -hmm. you know, representing Cape Coast and he representing Achim. Ebuakwa, mm -hmm. you know, Achim Ebuakwa, fought together and eventually the British governor brought back uh, Dasante. Came back by, uh, through Takradi, I guess. Through Takradi, yes. Okay. Mm. Uh, what was his status? Because when he left, was there still an Asante Hini? That's what I said. They yes. put their prempe the second. Okay, so 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 when he came back, what, what happened? Did he take back the, his position? No. When he came back, mm -hmm. the Ashantis within them recognized him as their king. Mm -hmm. That was why, that was why they waited until after his death in the 1930s. 31, yes. Yes, that Prempe II was officially recognized as the Asante oh, Hine. Oh, okay. But in reality, it was in 1924, mm -hmm. he was actually made uh, a king. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1896, a little mm -hmm. trouble. Mm -hmm. Then 1924, oh no, earlier than that, just after he was taken away, mm -hmm. he was made Asante Hine. Mm -hmm. But we had to wait until this man had died before officially okay. he would get his position. Mm -hmm. And the Ashantis did something that ensured peace. They told him that it was not your fault that made you be taken away. Mm -hmm. So you did not abdicate. Uh -huh. Neither were you disturbed. At the same time, it's not the fault of your nephew that has made him the chief. He didn't usurp your stool. So we will call you Kumasehene and he will be called Asantehene. So that was arrangement among them because he was the Kumase Hene. And every Asante chief lived outside Kumase. When you were in As on, on Kumase soil, you had to be taken to, to him, the Kumase Hene. The one. The first okay, one. Okay. So that helped him to exercise his suzerainty okay. until he died. And then his nephew took over from him. As and he passed on a lot to his nephew. That was why his nephew supervised the construction of Prempe College which he named after Prempe mm, the first, first, because he said that Ashantis would begin to do everything like the coastal people. And then also when he came in, he made Ashantis to know that uh, industry has now taken the place of war. So when they call you a brave man, you are somebody who could sweat and produce so many bags of cocoa and have a house in your village and several houses in Kumase, then they call you Ashanti warrior, as opposed to the previous Fighter. days. Mm -hmm. uh, so his going and coming was a blessing to the Ashanti nation. And ultimately, the demand for the 50,000 ounces of gold also evaporated. So they completely. never paid that money? They didn't pay the money. They rather became friends of the British and became the bigger supplier of uh, cocoa. Mm -hmm to the British, to British. Cadbury, mm -hmm. ready to make money. Indeed. And so the British were satisfied. I'm just curious, is, do we still have a Kumasehini? Or that was just a, a temporary arrangement to accommodate so today, the Asantehinis? The Kumasehini is the Asantehini because he's the president of the Kumase Traditional mm. Council. And below him are other paramount chiefs from okay. even from Kumase. Okay. Yeah, uh, the first one is Bantamahini. Mm -hmm. He's actually uh, a paramount chief. Okay. The next one is the uh, uh, Asafuhine, uh, yeah. and then we have the uh, 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 Anantahine and other chiefs there. So what? many, Marira Hine, that is, yeah. I'm, I'm grateful for that clarification. Um, as we end this very, very interesting conversation, what can we, 21st century citizens of Ghana and Africans, learn from the life of Prempe the uh, First, who returned to Ghana or Gold Coast a hundred years ago? The first thing is that we live by growing. If you live and you are not growing in the brain, then you, are, you become a pygmy. This man went away. He, there was no bitterness in him. No bitterness whatsoever. The very person who had captured him, he was ready to sit down with him. And eventually he taught him the Bible. He taught him Western education, which he came to in part to his own people. Mm -hmm. The next thing that Ghanaians have to be proud of after 100 years is that this man was in prison more than 
Nelson Mandela. Indeed, 28 years. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. more than Nelson Mandela. Mm -hmm. So we should begin to cherish our own, respect our own, revere our own. As you sit here talking to me, by your name, I know you are an Ewe man. Mm -hmm. And me too, I am half Enzema. Because I am a Kan, I can't be an Ashanti, I'm Enzema. Mm -hmm. But we are narrating the story of the Ashanti people mm -hmm. as proud Ghanaians, exactly. proud Africans, proud black people. Mm -hmm. That is what we should come together to cherish. Do not say that because he doesn't belong to me, it's not mine, and I won't be proud of him. After all, that's Ante Hini, uh, sorry, the Ochen Hini, I mentioned that when he was a young man, he felt he had to join the expedition to go and take the gold stool, gold stool away. Mm -hmm. So now you start calling it the gold, gold stool. stool. Yeah. You know, later on when he became a chief, he had grown in maturity experience and everything. And he had realized that the Shantis are my brothers. Just as the other people, the Fantis scholars and then legislators yes. who would come. Uh, Made the laws. Uh, th that you have to push him, bring, bring him back. The man back. Yes. So that unity, that yeah. solidarity yeah. Former ma enemies become must together. not be missing among us. Mm. After all, not long ago, we know that the Santehine went to the voter region. Mm -hmm. Before then, he had gone to Ukuga. Later, he came to Ochehine. And then the uh, other chiefs too paying uh, homage to him. Visit. If we do that, and then politicians also learn from this chief that he went away in court, savage, somebody who believed in human sacrifice and came back propagating the gospel, the rest of us have something to learn from him. And we also learned that when he came, all the chiefs from the length and breadth of the country came to pay homage to him, like to say, Akwaba. To him, I think that is what we should always do to each other every day. It's an inspiring story of uh, unity and lessons to be learned from events that took place a hundred years ago. Yes, Once ma'am. again, thank you so much. I also thank you for bringing the subject up because I should honor you that you reminded me of 1824 mm -hmm. Sagrenti mm -hmm. War with four at the end. Yes. Then 1870. For, oh, the first one was Saman Kwa Saman Kwa. And then 1874, mm -hmm. Sagrent was also four at the end. Mm -hmm. And then the return of Prempe, 1924, four. with four at, at the, the end. end. Yes. And you organized the whole thing. I thank you, and I believe that the Ashantis will be so grateful to you and the whole country, Ghana. They are my brothers. I lived there. The brothers and sisters, I lived there for about three years, and I really enjoyed my time in Kumasi. And that brings us to the end of this particular video. What for you were the highlights of this deep dive into history? Put them in the comments below. Let's have a conversation on history, not just of the Ashantis or of Ghanaians, but for Africans and black people the world over. We meet again, God willing, in the next video. Thank you. God bless.